We say goodbye to Region 2733 as it fires a few parting flares before disappearing out of Earth view. And a massive coronal hole rotates into the Earth strike zone. Will it bring us another solar storm? Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has gotten very exciting. It all began with region 2733 that grew very rapidly in Earth view. It's been firing off a bunch of little flares, including a mid-sea class flare, which is pretty surprising considering its solar minimum. However, this region did not fire any Earth-directed solar storms at us, and we've been watching it as it's slowly rotating now to the sun's backside. We will continue to watch it on the sun's backside, though, to see what more developments might occur. Occur. Meanwhile, we've got this massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or two. The last time we did a dance with this coronal hole about a, a month ago, it brought us up to storm levels and it could do so again. We are definitely expecting aurora at high latitudes and we could even see a bit of aurora at mid latitudes for just a skosh. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see we've been extremely low when it comes to the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. However, right around the 24th, about midday, you start seeing that X-ray flux rise up. That is the influence from region 2733 as it started growing very rapidly on the Earth-facing disk. You can see it firing off little mini flares and then on the 26th, pow, it fires off a C5 class flare. We thought it would launch a solar storm when it did this, but nope, it stayed kind of quiet, and after that thing settled back down. And then as that region rotated towards the sun's west limb, pow, it fires off another set of C-class flares, and it's continuing to do so even as it's rotating around the sun's backside. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, if you've been wondering what the static and the noise is on the bands, it's the sun. It's woken up from hibernation a little bit. The nice thing is it's boosted the uh, solar flux so that radio propagation is well into the marginal range, and it looks like we're going to hold on to this for a few more days. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually had some decent activity was late on the 23rd. We got hit by some fast wind from a coronal hole that we've been dancing with since like last August. It bumped us up to active conditions and then late on the 24th bumped us up to storm levels just for a short while. It wasn't enough to bring us any decent aurora down to mid latitudes, but high latitudes got some gorgeous shows over a couple days before things began to settle down. Since then, things have settled down and, well, they've settled down a bit more and, well, they've really settled down. This is about as quiet as it gets, folks. And meanwhile, we are now waiting for this, this new coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone. It's going to be sending us some fast wind here very shortly, and it could bump us back up to active and maybe even storm levels here in the next day. And although we are very much in solar minimum, we still are getting some gorgeous aurora views over a large part of the world, especially at high latitudes, like this gorgeous shot from Finland. And we've had beautiful views all over Norway. And we've seen some in Sweden. And in Scotland, in the UK. We've also seen it all over Iceland. And as we travel over the pond, we've seen it in Canada. Here's some shots from Saskatchewan and in Alberta. And we've even seen it on flights from Vancouver to Iceland. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And although there's not a lot of activity on the sun's backside, we do have a bright region, and it's been pretty active. In fact, on the 29th, it was firing off quite a few little solar flares. And this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. This region is going to be rotating into Earth view here in about the next day or two. We will actually can start seeing it right about now. And if it continues to keep up some of this activity, then it, we will easily have the solar flux stay up into the marginal range for radio propagation, and we will be able to enjoy the nice conditions we've already been having at Earth easily over the next week. 
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from the big coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to a 55% chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. Now, these conditions at high latitudes could easily last through the weekend before things begin to calm down. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting one, maybe two days of sporadic activity. So, aurora photographers at mid latitudes, man, I don't know if you're going to get any shots. It might be worth taking a look, but you're going to catch them fleetingly, if at all. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we say goodbye to region 2733 as it rotates to the sun's backside. Now it is still firing off a few small solar flares here and there, and that activity is continuing to boost the solar flux up just a little bit. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys are enjoying a nice boost to the solar flux. We're in the balmy mid-70s, and it looks like that will last for another day or so. So before we dip just a little bit, but then we'll rise again because a new region is rotating into Earth view and it will keep us up at marginal radio propagation easily over this next week. Now, because we're also in solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is a bit higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you uh, air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you now are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather is getting very exciting. Even though we've had to say goodbye to region 2733 as it rotates off of the sun's west limb, it is still firing off solar flares, which is giving us a great show and it's boosting the solar flux. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys are still enjoying some marginal radio propagation. Now I know GPS users, well, you guys may not be quite so happy with all the solar flares firing, but these are reasonable low-class solar flares, so you probably shouldn't be having much issue when it comes to reception. Now on top of this, we have a massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here in the next day or so, and it promises some gorgeous aurora views at high latitudes. Now aurora photographers at mid-latitudes well, these shows are getting a lot more fleeting for you guys because, well, we're at solar minimum and the wind just isn't all that strong anymore. But there is still a good chance to catch some uh, decent aurora if you stay on your toes. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.